Hey, Gaming Geek here with another video on using contrast colors. And this time I am painting up the Riot Quest models. And I do a little bit of a compare and uh, contrast between using my regular method of painting versus using contrast colors and washes. And my regular style of painting is to prime everything black uh, and then block paint in colors and then apply a wash and then end with highlighting. And so I am going to experiment a little bit where I do some of the models in my traditional style and then use the alternative uh, using contrast colors and we'll see which one is faster and better. Especially with these Riot Quest models because um, I got two beginner sets, one for each side. So you got two of the same models for a lot of these characters. So I'm able to uh, experiment a little bit and do things a little bit differently um, and see which method works best. Also, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step paint tutorial with this troll blood. Basically, we'll show you how I painted up most of these miniatures. But let's go ahead and dive right in. So here's a demonstration I'm going to show you about how to use contrast colors and washes to paint Boom Howler. So he is a troll blood from War Machine and so his skin is blue and so I'm trying to figure out what color blue to do because I usually do skin first and when I look at my options here um, the as much as I want to use the Talisar blue I think it is too bright uh, and the Akelian green also is super bright. Um, Ultramarine's blue, as usual, is too dark, and so I'm actually going to use Blue Tone from Army Painter instead because I think that's the color blue that I want, and it also provides uh, enough lighter uh, shading in there that I won't have to highlight at all. So let's go ahead and grab some Blue Tone to do the skin. Now that we've applied the skin, I'm going to work on the leather with snake bite leather. And because the skin is still uh, drying, I'm going to try to avoid uh, going up against the skin. And so leave a little bit of a gap between where the leather touches the skin because I don't want the colors to pull together. And I'll go back in later after it is dried to fill in that gap. Next we're going to use uh, Blood Angels Red. Also, don't forget his tongue. Next, we're going to do Wildwood. I'm also going to do these bumps. And then finally switching to my thin brush, I'm going to do the straps on his wrists. At this phase, my red sash is dry, so I'm going to use 
Ultramarine's blue. Now you can use any opaque regular paint, for example, um, cyan blue from Reaper. Uh, and I actually suggest in my other video not to buy the Ultramarine's blue because it's too opaque, but um, because I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. But you can use any blue that you have. Now go ahead and grab whatever silver that you have. I have Army Painter Plate Mail Metal. Paint up all of the metal parts, which is this thing here, as well as his front of his boots and the gun, the entire gun. I actually keep these parts white because I'll show you how to use the ironed in yellow uh, to make that a goldish color. You can use gold, um, but I want to show you what it looks like with the contrast paint. Uh, and don't forget the axe head here on the back. As well as um, all these little dots. I'm going to transfer to my smaller brush and do all of those dots. Also don't forget the buckle right here and the, these dots as well as there's two metal donuts where the straps on his wrist guard exist, so don't forget those. Once the silver is dry, take either your Army Painter Dark Tone or your Citadel Nuln Oil and put it over all of the silver. I don't put the shade on any of the dots or the small buckles and parts but I do put it on this axe head and I actually do the mouth because I want the darker recesses actually to have a black to them as well as the eye sockets provide a little bit of shade in the eyes. While we're waiting for that wash to dry I'm going to go ahead and put black around the base and this just helps darken it up so that when we put our basing material the white isn't peeking through. And I usually only do it around the feet and the edge right here on the lip because um, I don't always get the basing material all the way up over the wall and so that edge can show through as well. Alright now I'm going to attempt the fine lines on his sash and I'm a little nervous about this because it's pretty hard to get that fine of a line but I'm using light gray. You can use white but I want there to be a little bit less contrast and so let's go ahead and try this thing. Let's try on the back first and I can't quite tell where they're putting the lines but I think I'm just gonna do it in the middle of the blue. Next I use chestnut gold and I'm doing these whatever they are, I don't know what they are. Okay now I'm just grabbing white to uh, touch up the spots where I got the silver on the parts of the gun that I want it to be the yellow or gold. You can skip this step if you are just using gold paint or copper or whatever metal alternative metal color that you want on the gun. And so I'm just, I'll go ahead and do this whole thing. So I'm just touching it up because with contrast colors, you can't just paint over another color. 
uh, since it's showing the color underneath will show through. So I'm just touching these parts up. I'm going to be putting the yellow on there. While we're waiting for the white to dry, go ahead and grab your Seraphim Sepia or your Contrast Skeleton Horde. These are exactly the same color and this is cheaper so you should get this. Don't bother buying the Skeleton Horde. And you only need a little bit of it for the axe handle. And if I would have used gold on the gun, uh, I usually go over the gold parts uh, to shade it a little bit with this. All right now I'm going to use Ironed in Yellow for now that the white is dry on the gun parts. While the yellow is drying, I'll go ahead and do Sterling Mud for the base. You know what, I don't really like how these turned out to be almost exactly the same color as his clothes. And so I'm grabbing some um, Griff Hound Orange and I'm just going to paint over them with this and see what it how it turns out. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Especially since orange is the complementary color to blue. Now that the base is dry, I go ahead and take terracotta craft paint and I basically just dry dry brush. Then I mix in a little tan to the terracotta just to lighten it up a little bit to add another layer of dry brush. I just grab some black craft paint and I finish off the base. Then go outside and spray two coats of this uh, Tester's Dull Coat. Usually I only do one coat with my plastic miniatures, but with metal I do two coats because I feel like the paint comes off easier off of the metal. Go ahead then and use super glue to glue down some tufts. Alright, so here is the finished model and I think he turned out really really good and I definitely feel like the contrast colors and doing washes over white speeds up the painting process significantly so as you saw um, I'm really only doing one coat on most of the model and I don't have to do any highlighting. So there is no highlighting on this model at all. And so this snakebite leather naturally shaded itself along with the wildwood down here and then using the blue tone for the skin naturally creates shading. And so, and, and even the um, contrast colors with the red and the blue, which doesn't provide a lot of contrast, I think worked fine uh, on the sash. So, and then the yellow, which I really like a lot, I think uh, turned out well because it, it provides this orange shading. So overall, I would say these contrast colors are a major time saver and really do um, make painting a lot easier so for a lot of beginning painters I think if you can swallow the high price tag for these pots um, they are worth it especially the lighter colors uh, that provide more of a shade so um, I didn't do a walkthrough of all of these other miniatures here you know I was surprised that the red that I used um, actually did provide highlights 
uh, on this wrench over here. So I'm really happy with how one coat of that contrast color red turned out. I used um, both the blue shade here from Army Painter as well as the red shade. Again, all of this is spray painted white and that made for pink hair and a light blue shirt which I think worked out well. I used then ironed in yellow on the pants and then pinstriped it with um, blue although it looks green against the yellow pants. So this one was relatively easy to do. What's hard about this figure is all of these lines um, you can't really tell but they're gold as well as this upper part here. So and then for the flesh I did a flesh wash from Army Painter. Uh, and then this was um, Wildwood Brown. So again, uh, this character uh, came out really fast. For Harlow Hold'em High, um, his card shows him as being mostly black and online uh, Privateer Press's official picture of him is mostly browns, but I wanted him to have a little more color so I made him blue and then um, snake bite leather accents here uh, and so again was relatively fast and this is where you can see the what is this the uh, ultramarine blue um, yeah I'm not super happy with this color because even here it, it ended up being splotchy on the hat now the c clothes I think looks fine because you got highlighting coming from the contrast color but for the hat, um, it's uneven and a little splotchy. And then um, these are the base figures. And since I have two sets, I did two different color schemes. One that was standard to what was in the picture. And then the other one, I just changed it up so that it was a different color scheme. And I used um, Orc Flesh as the skin tones for both of these guys and then Griffhound Orange uh, for for his gloves and his hat and then, so all of these are contrast paints except for the silver obviously so uh, these guys are <laughs> really fun to play with uh, this guy is the more standard colors based off of his card and I used I did not use ironed in yellow but used a gold color with a wash of Seraphim Sepia, but the red is the Blood Angels Red, and I think he turned out pretty well too. And the skin tone, I used Gilliman Flesh on him. So here I try to have African American skin tones here, and I did have to highlight because I used Wildwood as a base, and it did not, I felt like the light colors were not light enough. And so I just went back with a lighter tan and highlighted uh, the raised muscles and I think his skin tone turned out well. Uh, a Kellyan green, uh, which really is more like a blue, a turquoise blue, and I think it looks pretty good. And then this is Griffhound orange for his armor. So here we have two color schemes for Iris. The one on the left is more um, cannon on the box and I used orc flesh contrast green and then um, ironed in yellow for the armor and then here I did exactly the same paint job although a little bit darker or a lighter uh, skin tone and then I used volupus pink uh, instead of the green for both the robe and uh, the rest of her armor so these two I did not use contrast colors and so for her um, I just spray painted silver the whole model and then threw on the dark tone and then highlighted blue and put on some gold and called it a day so she was super super fast and easy to paint and I actually didn't use this is more of a traditional way that I paint anyway but it, it was very fast to do that and then for him, I actually spray painted him all black and painted him more traditionally. Uh, I could have used the Black Templar on him, but it was more uh, quick to just prime him black because uh, so much of him is black. And then actually, um, here, here's where you can tell a difference. Um, so 
This one on the left, the traditional colors, is how I normally paint, which is, again, to prime it all black. And then uh, here you can tell I just painted uh, all of these different colors and then slowly added white to highlight the hair uh, and then as well the blue for the clothes. And, and this is my traditional method of painting. And here on the right, I spray painted white and used contrast colors as well as inks or um, washes. And it was way faster to do this because I'm cutting out a step. I, want, I, I just wanted to do an experiment to see how much time I can save. And definitely I save time because I'm not doing layering here on the right. I'm just doing one layer of uh, the paint which provides the shade. But you can tell that the shadows and the lines, you don't have black lining. So what priming a model black does is it, it creates a black line between the different colors. And it's more forgiving as a beginner painter because you don't have to paint right up to the edge. But the even though I prefer sort of having black lining naturally painted in, um, the speed in which I can get these models done using contrast colors and by priming with white it's worth it just to do to use this method because I think this model here on the right um, looks pretty darn good even though you don't have black lining so uh, definitely worth it here um, these two I actually painted both of them more traditionally I didn't use contrast colors and um, spray painted him actually blue and used a blue wash and he was spray painted black so this is the uh, regular colors for this guy and then th this is an alternative color scheme and then here we have black Bella and I bought two of them because the base sets don't come with a I don't remember what it's called combat person or a fight person and so here on the left is the um, regular colors and here on the right is the alternative paint scheme and I really suck at painting eyes so if you look at <laughs> her eye here, it really looks cartoonish. I did a much better job here. Um, but in general, I don't really tend to paint eyes. I just leave a shadow there. But since she has a patch over one eye, because uh, it's really hard for me to match where the eyes, the pupils are looking, so it looks goofy. But because she has a patch over one eye and I only had to paint one eye, I went ahead and did these two. I did use the contrast color apothecary white on her gray clothes or on her white clothes and it does provide subtle shading so I, I do like that I used the vol volupus pink on her hair and again that pro provides some nice shading too and then templar black on these black spots and then silver and gold uh, on armor and her swords so relatively easy to paint and then here I used Templar Black on her clothes, sort of did a reverse of this. And um, then instead of using uh, Apothecary White on, on these clothes, um, I actually used uh, Space Wolves Gray because I wanted it to be just a little bit darker. And her hair, um, I actually didn't put shade in her hair. So I definitely feel like contrast colors saved me a ton of time in painting these miniatures and I am excited about this being my new method of regular painting uh, because it basically takes away a whole step or two of needing to do block painting and then putting a wash on top of that as well as highlighting. Uh, all of those steps are taken away to just one coat of paint on most of the parts. And so this is my new method. I'm gonna be moving from primarily priming in black to just using rattle can white and using these contrast colors as well as washes. If you wanna take a look at the video where I talk about a comparison of the different washes, go ahead and click here and that will save you some money. Otherwise, this is the results of using contrast colors. Please subscribe and like the video, helps me out a lot. And you can check the Patreon uh, link below to see what the giveaway is for this month. Otherwise, I will see you next time.